Now let's look at the same problem, but we have a different density function for x1 and x2. So this density function over here is still piecewise. If we look at it, we have the density function is equal to 1 if x is within the interval of 0, 1, and elsewhere it's 0. If we look at this density function carefully, we still see that x1, x2, these are non-negative random variables because the density function isn't zero only within this interval when x is greater than or equal to zero. When x is less than zero, the density function is zero. So that's non-negative random variable. All right, now we're going to calculate this integral over here. We need to be very careful because now f1 has three pieces, f2 also um, has three pieces. The function looks like this, so we can sketch the diagram over here. It looks like this. Sorry, it's kind of slanted over here. So this is what we have. So this is x over here, and this is the square over here, and this is 1. And the density function looks like this. Over here, 0, and then uh, 1 over here, and then 0 over here again. Okay, so 0 over here again. Okay. So this is the density function, f of x. This is the one we have. Okay. All right, so how should we do this one over here? We need to look at, look at again, this, the, the, the y parameter over here. Now, we, we need to look at y over here. So we look at first x1, f1 over here. Now, it all depends on how big the y is, because if y is greater than, um, say, 1 or less than 1, this function over here is different, because if y is greater than 1, then this part is going to be 0. So naturally, we're going to look at whether y is less than 1 or greater than 1. So let's, first, of course, we have the following. We know that if y is less than 0, 0 over here, we know this h of y is always going to be 0. So this part is always going to be easy. So now this is 0 over here. And then look at 1. We see that if y is, say, between 1 and 0, so what's going to happen? If y is between 1 and 0, and x over here must be between 0 and y. So we have x over here must be less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 1, and greater than or equal to 0. That means at least we can figure out what kind of f1 we should have. So f1 of x within this interval, we are going to have simply 1. Okay. So this is part of the integrand, so we are done. Now look at f2 of y. So if y is, if y is less than or equal to 1, greater than or equal to 0, we're going to look at what y minus x is. Remember, x is less than y because it's between 0 and y. So we have the following. We have y minus x is greater than or equal to 0, of course, but because y is less than 1 and x is positive, so y minus x over here actually is also less than 1. So this part over here is also between 0 and 1. So now we can see that f2 over here must be also y minus x over here must also be 1 because within this interval, when y minus x is between 1 and 0, this one is 1. So now we can easily integrate. So if y is between 0 and 1, then we have the following. So h of y y is a parameter we are talking about. So this is from 0 to y, and it's simply going to be 1 times 1 and dx. So this is going to be simply y. Now, we also see from x1 and x2's values, we know x1 has density function 0 if x is greater than 1. And for x2, we have the same thing. So x1, x2, they take values within the interval 0 and 1. That means this random variable y over here, if y is greater than 2, 
this density function is going to be zero because y's value can only be between zero and two because x1, x2 are between zero and one. So we already have this one over here. So we know that h of y over here is going to be zero if if y is greater than or equal to two. So the only thing we need to look at is now when y is between one and a two, right? That's the one we have. So when we have y is between two and one, so let's look at what's going to happen. We're going to look at this function over here. So we are look, going to look at this integral, um, this one over here. So we're going to look at this one over here, so with this integral from zero to y and f2 and we have y minus x over here and we have f1 of x over here, dx. Now y is somewhere over here, so let's look at this one over here. This is 2 and this is something we have over here and y is something over here. This is going to be y, right? So if that's the case, because f1 of x is 1 between 0 and 1, beyond the 1 is 0, so we can actually write down this one as the following. So this is going to be from 0 to 1, because 1 is the dividing point, and f2 and y minus x and times f1 of x dx plus from 1 to y and we have f2 and y minus x over here, f1 of x dx. Now remember this one over here is simply 1 and this one over here is simply 0. So this term over here is actually 0 over here, the whole thing. So what we have over here is that now this is equal to from 0 to 1 and f2 and y minus x. And then we have over here simply times 1 and then dx. So we now just need to look at what this function is. When x is between 0 and 1 and y is between 1 and 2. We can actually see that, um, but we're going to do some kind of analysis over here. Okay, now let's look at this function over here, what kind of um, function we have. So f2 of y, we know this is the one we have. f of 2 is the same as this function. If it's within 0 and 1, then it's 1. If it's beyond this interval, it's going to be 0. So what we have over here is this function. It's y minus x over here, right? This is going to be equal to 1 if y minus x is inside this interval 0, 1, right? And it's going to be 0 if y minus x, this value over here, is not inside over here. So we're going to try to see what kind of situation we can get 1. y minus x is between 1 and 0. That means we have over here, that means if we just multiply negative 1, all these sides of the inequality, we know we need to switch these inequalities. So what we have over here is that this is the same thing as saying that x minus y is going to be greater than or equal to negative 1 and less than or equal to 0, right? We multiply negative 1 over here. So what it means is that x over here, if we look at this one over here, so this, this one over here means that x over here is between y minus 1 and y. Because you can see over here, x minus y greater than, less than or equal to 0, that means x is less than or equal to y. So this is the interval we have. If we look at this interval, we know y is between 1 and 2. And y minus 1 is going to be between um, 0 and 1. So y minus 1 is actually over here, so somewhere between 0 and 1, and that's when it's going to be 1, and beyond that is 0. So this integral over here actually is equal to 1, and this is 
y minus 1. That's when y minus x is between 1 and 0. And in this interval, f2 of this function over here is equal to 1. So it's equal to 1. And then we have dx over here. Again, this is just a constant. When you integrate, this is what we have. It's 1 minus y minus 1. And that will give us 2 minus y. And that is the value for this h of y when y is between 1 and 2. By the same way, same method, we can actually show this integral over here is going to be 0 if y is greater than 2, because y minus x is going to be greater than 1. So to put all these things together, we have now h of y is a piecewise function, which is the probability density function for the sum of two independent random variables. So we have over here is 0. Um, if y is less than 0, greater than or equal to negative infinity, this is the one we start with. And then between 0 and 1, we have y. That's when y is between 0 and 1. Okay, that's when we have. And then between 2 and 1, between 2 and 1, we have the following. We have 2 minus y. Okay? And beyond that, we have 0 again. So if y is greater than or equal to 2. Okay. So if you look at this density function, this is exactly the density function we had in problem 1.4. I think that's, that's the one we have. So that's the density function for the sum of two independent variables.